What's something you stumbled upon that made you nope the F out? Hackers. Viewers edition. Now apparently some of you fancy yourself hackers and have come across some not so great stuff. Let's hear what you were saying in the comments. Story 1. When I was 13 to 14, I ended up winning a Minecraft account in a giveaway. It was a college-aged woman about hammer 9 to 10 years older than me. Her mistake was putting the same password, or very similar password, which I usually figured out, on almost every account she had on the internet. Minecraft, Google, Twitter, Facebook, and Amazon. That Amazon account had the woman's card and her mother's card on the account. I had her address and card information and date of birth, etc, etc, from all these different accounts on the internet. Basically everything but her social security number. And as a young teenage boy with no money, I sat there staring at that Amazon account info page for probably 20 whole minutes, <clears throat> fighting back and forth in my mind if I should order something cool like a TV or console with one of those cards and deliver it to a different address that wasn't my home. Didn't have any specific ideas because I was still fighting myself on if I should even do it at all, so they wouldn't trace it back to me. And I might have been young, but I was old enough to realize that it wouldn't be hard for police to find me if they wanted to. My plan wasn't actually that clever, so I decided to make a post on her Twitter saying something like, This account has been hacked. To anyone who reads this, don't use the same crappy password on all your accounts. I am now logging out of all accounts. Or something to the same effect. But either she had already changed her Twitter password, all of this happened over the course of like two days, or I decided against it so as not to cause a panic or something. I don't know. This was a long time ago, so I logged out of all those accounts, except for the Minecraft account, which I had already changed the username, email, password, date of birth, and security questions for, and noped out of there. When I checked a couple weeks later, all of her passwords were changed, which I was happy about. Hopefully she picked a better password. Okay, here's the thing. Long passwords are the best passwords. The longer they are, the better. Uh, just a combination of random words and numbers that fill up enough space. A good way to do this is to just take the URL of the website and use that to as like a cipher. So if the first letter in the URL is an M, that might always equal the word pillow. And then the second letter of the URL should be associated with a number. The third letter of the URL should, should be associated with a different word, and so on, until you have a password that's like 15, 20 characters long. But then you also will always remember your passwords because you have your own personal nonsense cipher connected to letters. I don't know, it's just way easier that way, I think. Story 2. I sympathize with the wife stalking her husband's Facebook account. I left Facebook when my husband died, but went through the whole come home phase at the depth of the pandemic. I ended up with a busted ankle and got therapy, but it was actually reassuring to hear that other widows go through the same phase. I was finally able to do a memorial trip for him to visit the Star Wars rides at Disney, a big deal when you live in the UK. And I feel he's at home and at peace, but it's just good to know I'm not alone. Story 3. I was just thinking about this the other day. Way back in the stone age of the internet, pre-AOL, so I'm obviously older than dirt, security was virtually non-existent. Once I was bumming around, checking out random web pages, and ended up checking one out that was just random letters, numbers, and symbols. When I got in, there were technical mock-ups and weapon testing data. I think I might have stumbled into a spy network, and I noped the F out. I didn't go bumming around again and after that until Google made stumbling into stuff like that nearly impossible. Story 4. Way back around 2000, when the internet was getting into workplaces, I worked with a colleague who once had the misfortune to find CP on a user's work machine. Reported hit and had to go through the whole thing with the company HR, the cops called in, statements, trawling system logs, off to court and altogether nasty stuff, as you would imagine. Story 5. Back in the days of Netbus and Back Orifice, I was so fascinated by them that I scoured my entire region for exploitable instances and collected a horde of infected computers. Many of them had clearly been purposely infected by family members or jealous, untrusting boyfriends, so one by one I claimed them all by changing the port numbers and passwording them like some kind of cyber Batman lol. One day it finally sank in just how quasi-moral my whole scheme was, so I ended up setting them all free by first checking their systems for vulnerabilities and then destroying the backdoor programs. 
The nope of this story was my inevitable turning away from the whole thing in an attempt to redeem my digital soul, lol. I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention as much as I should have because you used something called back orifice and and that's all I can focus on right now. Yes, that's right, everyone. All I can focus on is back orifice. Oh, God. I, what is today and what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Story six. For the French tea chat one, we had another one called Skyrock Chat or something like that, where you would be put in categories depending on your age. In high school, we made a profile of a 13-year-old just for curious fun and trollsome young. We weren't ready for the insane flock of pedo lurking on that chat. At some point, we had like eight to nine convos a day with dudes in their 30s pretending badly to be 14, then revealing themselves as predators. It was insane. When I think about it, like 14 years later or so, it was kind of mentally scarring. It was my first encounter with true depravity, and it was frightening. We were kids, so we just logged out and never touched the thing again, but in retrospect, we should have contacted the police and given the logs of the account. Some of these a-holes might still be doing that kind of crap, and it's horrible to think that it could have been stopped right here and there, but it wasn't because we're too young to be that responsible to the world. Story 7. This reminds me of back when I first arrived at my current profession. Can't give details, but I work at the NSA, and for a good few months, I had a puke bucket at my desk at all times. I honestly almost hate myself for how used to all of it I've become, but... Knowing that the people whose lives I ruin get off on that stuff is what helps me get out of bed in the morning. You know, I might not be the biggest fan of uh, government security agencies. Not that I'm doing anything wrong, I just, I don't like that. But I will say, when it comes to busting the kind of people who do that crap, I am very appreciative for what you folks do. And I'm very appreciative for you having to deal with the mental scarring of seeing that crap. So, thank you for your service in that regard. Story 8. One of my ex-girlfriends had a bestie who was a hacker. She said she can hack me and my social media account. I was like, lol, okay, go ahead. She hacked my account. Went into my DMs with my now ex-girlfriend. She saw some very intimate pictures of her in great detail. I asked her, what did you see? She was completely freaked out at these photos of her best friend. Story 9. Someone I know online hacked into the school's staff to try disabling the website blocker and the tracking softwares. He wanted to use ThinkPad the school gave him to play games on it. He ended up finding all the same info at one of those posts, social security numbers, pay, addresses, and a bunch of other stuff. He sent a tip to the school with a screenshot of the info. They didn't change anything with the systems for over two years until they did. He no longer is able to use the ThinkPad as a personal computer, so he's peed. Story 10. Ah, uh, something in this made me think of an old book I read, The Hacker Crackdown. After a big disruption of phone service on a holiday, an FBI team was formed to hunt hackers. P.S. That phone problem was actually a glitch in the new phone servers. The phone company told everyone that, but none of the politicians understood one word of the explanation and insisted it had to be hackers. Anyway, the FBI thought they had a major catch when they caught a hacker who had stolen a phone company document and posted an edited version on a social media site. It's amusing to note that the document had nothing to do with hardware or software. It was entirely bureaucraties surpassing opacity, as the hacker said on that site. It could hypothetically be used for social engineering if a hacker wanted to pretend he was a phone company employee. The company claimed it was worth $70,000, an absurdly inflated figure that included the cost of the mainframe computer and the monthly salaries of all the employees. But the hackers lawyer gunshot their case and left the FBI's credibility in tatters, in the words of the book's author, when he pointed out that anyone could use the phone company's free catalog to buy the exact same document unedited for $13. I don't know. I mean, first off, how could anyone believe this story? The government not understanding technology and the internet? I don't believe it. The government's always on the cutting edge and certainly doesn't ask amazingly stupid questions when it comes to anything related to technology. Nope, 
That's never happened and never will happen, and I will eat my hat if someone can prove otherwise. I gotta get rid of my hats. Story 11. The worst one for me was Cicada 3301. It actually led to me destroying my phone, microwaving my computer, and moving to another state where I wouldn't touch a computer or any kind of social media for five years. This happened around the same time as when disbanded anonymously due to being heavily infiltrated by federal agents. Thanks, Sabu. Not to mention, after OP, ICE, ISIS, I received a strongly worded warning from the DOD and NSA. Thanks for the patch, by the way. Essentially a thank you, but do it again and you go to Gitmo. I still don't know what the end game of 3301 was, but we agreed it wasn't the feds. I was fully aware of the kind of damage that could be done using technology, as that's what we specialized in. I was paranoid and had to disappear for a while. To this day, I try not to get too involved in any of that stuff, not to mention after five years away from it, I'm completely out of the loop anyways. Story 12. I once had an interest in hacking and learned a little about how to access computers through a shared network. Teacher left the room once and I thought it would be fun to look up answer keys. Simple stuff. Relatively harmless. Dumb kid that I was, I was going to slip an early meme into his picture folder as well. Dear God, the lewd selfies the guy had. Story 13. I remember at school we used PDFs. I figured out a glitch. If you weren't the owner, you could still text on it. So I just put random letters in there and 69s and a few 8s. Keep a note that I was probably 11. And I thought it was so funny because the teacher couldn't erase it. Then they brought in the technology teacher and she couldn't erase it either. The next day we had a whole assembly about how hacking is bad. I told one of my friends who snitched on me. So obviously I was peed and the principal gave me a detention for hacking and being inappropriate. I mean, sure, give some detention because you were doing something you weren't supposed to, but also I feel like that should count for extra credit in any IT classes you've got. If a student can outperform the IT teacher, I feel like you should kind of get a free pass in that class. Like, bare minimum a B, but probably an A. Come on. Story 14. My gang came across a CP server in Australia. We reported it to the RCMP, and it led to the arrest of about 1,500 people worldwide. Not so much a nope, but it was fun adding scripts to the server, keylogger in the chat rooms, etc. Story 15. This person at a school hacked into the school's main account, principals, and changed everyone's grade to an A. They couldn't remember everyone's grades and decided to just give up trying. Story 16. I remember getting banned on Nexus Mods for re-uploading a grass mod that the mod author had deleted for whatever reason and was really hard to find. To subvert their IP block, I got a Tor browser and somehow stumbled into the dark web. When I figured out what it was, I promptly uninstalled Tor and cleared my search history. First and last time I went on the dark web. Story 17. I knew a kid in high school that was able to hack, and the best thing he was able to do in my mind was get the password to the school Wi-Fi. I was not a tech kid, and when he showed me, it was like wizardry. He was a friend of mine, and only a few of us had access to the Wi-Fi. But sadly, senior year, they changed the password and made it extremely hard to find. I just had a moment where I was thinking, like, what was my school's Wi-Fi password? And then I realized, oh yeah, we really didn't have that much Wi-Fi back when I was in school. <laughs> and it made me sad. Oh, age. Will you ever stop? Story 18. The AOL guy is a liar. None of the crap he mentions works that way. No one in law enforcement is going to just casually drop into your server and send you a message to shut it down. These are the kinds of stories you get from people who watch hackers on repeat. Story 19. Back in the late 2000s, me and some gang members got caught during one of our trades and we had to flee. My butt, being slow, got caught. Took a drive with the cops, we got to the station, and they left to get some foggy memories. They don't remember what they had left to get. I escaped the car in cuffs, snuck in the station, and did some digging on a computer I found, and deleted my file, and then I hopped the F out of there, found my buddies on their way to save me, and we left. Never went back to that city ever again. Story 20. I'm not a hacker, but my cousin is extremely intelligent and was able to do that. 
We decided to find something scary on the dark web, because I'm into the horror genre and like scary stories, but I also have a problem finding a horror movie because they're not that scary to me. After I saw what I saw, though, I realized that horror movies weren't scary because I know that most of the things aren't real. I don't want to go into a lot of detail because what I saw was really effing disturbing. It's basically a crazy guy doing things to himself. Story 21. Not a hacker, but every one of us here has probably stumbled upon some form of CP on a weird website or something. I was 11 and on a website talking to random people and I got sent some of that stuff. I never touched that website again. Crap like that is why I will always support hackers who turn in these creeps. Like, I know, oh, it's bad, it's illegal that they're hacking, but if they're catching these kind of creeps and turning them into the cops, more power to them. Hack all you want. I will gladly deal with the occasional virus if you hackers just choose to get rid of all the creeps. Thank you in advance. Story 22. Real hackers or does it include Hacknet, a game, by the way? One of the target servers, when you're already far in the game, just hack you back five times faster than you can ever hack them, noping the F out of the red screen and getting used to reinstalling your computer if you try it multiple times. Trying multiple times did work in the past, so why not that target as well? Story 23. I'm genuinely curious about what is wrong with using the internet to learn pyrotechnics. Fireworks and explosives are fun and would make a fantastic entertainment or other careers. Clarification, I am an actual human who sees things for what they are. Story 24. I always felt that people's PlayStations and Xbox accounts when they die should go to somebody, but unfortunately Microsoft and PlayStation are pricks when it comes to ownership of dead people's accounts. Although honestly I don't think they would ever be able to find out if an account holder was dead unless someone knew them. Story 25. Not a hack, but back in the days of IP addresses needing to be manually typed in to start a connection for things like VoIP or online games, I mistyped the IP of a friend had given me to connect to his computer. I flipped two numbers around by accident in the first set, i.e. instead of 223, I typed 232. When my computer connected, rather than seeing the standard connection screen for the program we were using at the time, I instead saw a window pop up on its own with a login password prompt, and a timer started slowly counting down from 30, along with the symbol slash single for one of the major banking firms. I don't think I've ever moved that fast to unplug the phone cord from the back of my PC since. I mean, to be fair, I hope that you have not had to remove the phone cord from the back of your PC in well over a couple decades, hopefully. But boy, do I ever remember those days. Ah, the dial-up sound. It is almost a thing of ancient legend these days. Scree, blor, 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 bing, bong, ba dung, bong, bing, bow. Story 26. In high school, I used Microsoft Word to access the internet on a school PC with internet browsers disabled for tests. Didn't cheat, but was listening to music before the school admins thought I was cheating during a test. Story 27. Hacked my high school's Horizons system. Not really hacking, I opened a terminal, navigated to the shared network driver, and found a file in the root directory called pwbat, opened it in a text editor, and was able to see every username and password that had access to the system. Then I used those credits to download the picture of students I didn't like and used MS Paint to very poorly add facial hair, scars, and black eyes, then re-upload them to the network. I would have gotten away with it if I hadn't left the files saved in a folder on the desktop. But hey, I was only 14. Yeah, you say not really hacking, but then you also say a bunch of technical stuff that just left me very, very confused. I'm old enough to just say, yeah, that's hacking. Oh god, am I the old, outdated politician who doesn't understand technology? Oh crap. Story 28. In high school, all computers had three accounts. Student, password student1. Teacher, password teacher1. Admin, password admin1. Yeah, didn't take long for us to realize we could log in as teachers, and then I myself went a step further. Admin account accessed, and, uh... The first thing I saw was a program called Secret Cam, and upon clicking it showed a view from a hidden camera in a girl's changing room. The school had two gym classrooms with a set of changing rooms each. 
I noped out of that account by shutting off the PC, but later on, outside of class, with no teacher supervision and only two friends with me, I went back on there and we made a video recording of the login as well as the camera. Then, with the recording, we went to the police station after school to report it. Principal was fired the next day as well as some of the teachers. The video recording was played for all classrooms and that was that. Except that they never changed the passwords and not even a week later I was back on the admin account just goofing around. Story 29. I once accidentally DDoSed a large shop's website while trying to scrape some data from it as one of my work assignments. Turns out web scraping can really kill a website, especially when the website is crappy and the one scraping tries to do it in the fastest way possible. The website was down for at least an hour. Story 30. Once hacked into my school's IT accounts and black screened every computer for weeks. It was so bad they canceled school because all of the servers were corrupted and were unrecoverable. It was over something petite, think you mean petty, but I didn't care. Story 31. I once DDoSed my school's division's website using a school computer. I don't even know how I did it. I used a Windows PowerShell, which is just a reskin of Command Prompt. I don't even know how the F it was allowed for us to use by the IT department. I opened multiple Command Prompt windows and proceeded to ping their website. I also don't know why I got a single one day in school suspension. Allow me to give you some clarification on why that was allowed by the IT department. I have known people who have worked for school IT departments, and they are usually run by people who don't know crap about IT, because a school doesn't want to pay money for an actual IT specialist. They just get someone who, quote unquote, knows computers. Story 32. Not a hacker, but I found out my younger brother told a girl his address and that he loves her. This kid is nine. Yes, nine, by the way. The girl's like 13 or 15. I don't effing know, but holy crap. Story 33. Learned how to hack from an AOL chat. Was making 30k a month from scamming at the age of 17 because of it. Who and why the F were these AOL chat people teaching children to hack into crap? I have some smart friends that picked up a lot of stuff by just hopping around on forums. Hell, most of them went into IT, and one of them even ran the high school's computer lab because the teacher assigned to it was just too old f school for that stuff. But now I'm questioning what other stuff these same people are into. Story 34. Something that made me nope the F out of a whole butt school is I was just messing around in class. I started messing around with the Wi-Fi for the administrators. I figured out the password and got into one of their computers. There was two and a half terabytes of CP from cams in the bathroom. That school no longer exists. I do hate the amount of CP that we learn about from these threads, but I really do appreciate how many of them are people reporting that and getting people arrested or schools shut down, apparently. It is good to know that uh, while hackers may be making some people's lives more difficult, they're making the creeps' lives really difficult. And that's great. Story 35. Honestly, I'd love to hire a hacker to get my stole crypto crap back, but bet the effort is going to be more expensive than the $300 spent on the items that were stolen from me. Oh well. Story 36. My friend's boat net a long time ago infected a certain work laptop. That laptop during work hours was a literal .gov. One rule to hacksering, don't screw with the government or they'll screw with you. Next rule is don't be malicious unless you can accept the fact that you might go to jail. Most people don't care if they get hacked and all you do is observe or proxy through them. Don't be a jerk, be a gray hat, and chances are you'll be just fine. Story 37. First one is fake as hell. He fat fingered the CD command, so he accidentally typed CD, short for change directory. For anyone not tech savvy, a directory is just a computer term for a folder. Pressed enter and somehow didn't notice at all that he changed directories despite being able to see what directory you're in at all times. You literally have to not be looking at your screen and have insanely awful luck to accidentally type and enter the command. It's not like he could have accidentally typed CD along with something else and had it go through. You can only input a single command at a time in a terminal. I'll be honest, I don't know what half of you just said means, but I'll have to take your word for it. Also, you folks have to be aware that 
We don't choose these stories based on which ones seem the most legit, right? I don't care if they're legit or not. I just care that they're interesting or interesting to comment on. Anyway, have a great day. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.